What's up, Domino community? My name is Lily Hevish, and today I'll be teaching you how to build a domino wall using the diagonal technique. So get your dominoes, and let's start. Welcome to part three of my domino wall tutorial series. If you haven't seen the previous videos on the alternating technique and the column technique, definitely click here to watch those first. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make the diagonal technique, which is actually much more simple than the previous techniques and can be used in various types of setups and combined with other walls as well. Now I call this wall the diagonal technique because instead of having the base layer parallel with each other with straight dominoes, the dominoes are actually shifted on a diagonal. So instead of placing the first domino straight in front of me, I'm going to angle it 45 degrees, and then I can place the next one 45 degrees as well on the other side. And the distance between these two dominoes, again, is one domino height. So if I were to place another domino on top, you would see that this edge is flush and this edge is flush and everything is very even and these two green dominoes are parallel so if these lines were to extend they would never cross or intersect this technique is pretty easy because every other row repeats and all we're going to do is continue adding more dominoes along the same 45 degree angle i like to do the first and second layer together instead of just doing the first layer because the second layer is almost like my guide for knowing where to place the domino that's gonna go underneath it. So I'm just gonna continue making a line like this. Now the diagonal technique is a little bit more difficult to make it a perfect straight domino wall. So if you do want to be more precise, I recommend getting like a yardstick or a meter stick and just placing it in front of it or behind it so you have a line on where to actually put the dominoes. Otherwise, you can kind of just eye it. This technique is kind of nice to use when you're just, you know, aimlessly building and you don't need something to be super precise, but you just want to build something for fun. Sometimes it can be hard to get the exact angle, but that actually makes it more low key to build in a way and from here the pattern just repeats so we'll place another layer of green dominoes on top and now another row of orange dominoes on top and again with walls precision is key so double check all of the corners make sure they're all square and there aren't dominoes that are sort of like hanging off the edge or too far inwards you want it all to be very in line with each other and very even. And now I'm just gonna build it up until I get 13 layers. I would recommend making domino walls at least 13 layers to make sure that they work. Otherwise, if it's too low, it might not trigger the next domino that's underneath it. You need enough dominoes that are high enough to crumble down and knock down the rest of the wall. Ideally 13, 15 is guaranteed, but again, that also just depends on the type of dominoes you use. So definitely do some tests. But anyways, I'm gonna keep building higher. So this is a 2D pyramid using the diagonal technique and you'll notice that this triangle is actually much shorter than if I were to make the same 2D pyramid using the alternating technique or the column technique and that's because we're using the diagonal on the base rather than two straight dominoes that are just you know one domino height next to each other. This sort of widens it so if you need a shorter triangle shape then the diagonal technique is probably the way to go. I'm going to build two more layers, I'm going to add one more on this side and on this side. And of course you can keep extending this wall adding more layers you can even angle the sides if you want by shifting the sides and slowly but surely you know making it turn like this just make sure that the distance between the two dominoes is still one domino height from edge to edge. The diagonal technique is really good if you have an irregular shape for a domino structure. You want it to be wavy or you know maybe spell out some words. Like It's very easy to shift the dominoes in the base layer and then place the dominoes on top without having to follow a very strict like pattern in terms of the structure like the alternating technique. I'm gonna get rid of this curve. A couple of interesting things about the diagonal technique, every other layer repeats, so it's very easy to make. And rather than having columns or like a window gap in the alternating technique, we have a more flat face. You see more of the front face of the domino rather than like just a sliver of it if I were to place a domino this way. In that sense, using the diagonal technique is great if you want to see a lot of surface area on the domino, which can be useful for certain types of patterns or certain designs that you're making in a domino wall or if you want to see it from a very specific angle here it looks mostly green from the front it's 50% green and orange 
and from the other side, it's mostly orange. I think this technique is the most useful if you just want to build a wall that's really fast. You don't want to see a lot of imperfections because it's hard to see if something is off when everything is on a 45 degree angle rather than looking straight at it. So in a way, it sort of hides all the imperfections and that can be kind of nice when you're building. But I will note, this technique is slightly less stable if you're building very tall. The higher you build it, the less stable it will be. So if you are planning to make something that's, you know, maybe a meter tall, I would recommend the column technique or the alternating technique instead. But before I knock it down, I do want to note this technique is great for combining with the column technique. So for example, if I wanted to extend it, I could add another domino right here. This domino is in line with the green domino that's right behind it. And I can add another one like this. So the diagonal technique and the column technique go hand in hand. So you can combine them and make it turn on various angles. And again, if I wanted, I could go back to the diagonal technique after I use the column technique and just keep having it switch back and forth depending on the shape that I'm doing. Now because the wall is very short on one side here, I could use a field starter to knock it down by just setting it up a couple of rows in like this. Now if you choose to knock it down with field starters, just make sure that there's a bit of a gap in between the last field starter and the wall so that there's room for it to actually tip over into the wall. And I would recommend placing the field starters at a point in the wall when it's not too tall, but not too low. So I would say maybe like six to eight layers is a good layer height to put the last big field starter. And again, if you're using something else to knock it down, like books, CDs, or DVDs, depending on the weight, you could probably get away with knocking it down at 13 layers or higher. But for field starters, I'm gonna put it closer to the beginning. So I'm gonna take these field starters down actually and show you another way to knock it down. If you wanna topple it with just a domino line, we just need to make sure that the domino that we knock down falls away from the wall. We don't want it to tip forward into the wall. And we know that this way forward is into the wall because it goes into the orange domino. So I'm gonna place a blue domino right behind the green domino. And this blue domino is right in the middle of the green domino with about one domino thickness of space in between. And now we can continue the domino line. All right, let's knock it down. Nice. So if we watch this back in slow motion, you'll see the domino line knocks out the green domino and then the orange domino no longer has the support. So that falls over and then the green one on top of that falls over and then it all just kind of crumbles again in a chain reaction. Also, don't worry if the last domino or two doesn't fall over. That always happens with 2D pyramids or walls that have just like one or two layers on the end. I would still consider that a success. So don't worry about it. If you really want these dominoes to fall, have it trigger from both sides at the same time. So now you know how to make the diagonal technique, the column technique, and the alternating technique. If you haven't seen the other tutorials, you can click right over here to watch them. Let me know what is your favorite type of domino wall and why do you like using that technique over others? If you have specific reasons for using them, let us know in the comments. Let's have a discussion and just see where people are at because I know some builders, they love the column technique wall and other people, they love the alternating technique wall for various reasons. And it's just kind of cool to see why people choose choose to do the techniques that they try. All three methods are valid techniques. Use what you like best. And if you want to share it with the rest of the community, just use the hashtag H5 Domino community. And again, domino structures will be much easier to set up and build using the proper kinds of dominoes. So I do recommend my own H5 Domino Creations, which is made in collaboration with Spin Master. These are very precise dominoes that are made for stacking tall. So definitely pick up a set at hevish5.com slash buy dominoes or the link in the description. I want to give a shout out to our feature community member, Mexican Domino Pro 8, who left this super detailed comment on my last video. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. Check out more tutorials down below in the description as well. And as always, I'm Lily Hevish, and keep on building.